Yeah, okay. Go. Good morning, everyone. Nice to see everyone back. Sorry for the long gap. Uh, I was traveling, plus uh, had some injuries, so we couldn't arrange a session earlier. We tried to do one last week, but then we had to postpone because of the uh, hurricane in Florida. So here we go. Uh, I was expecting a lot of things to change in the industry uh, in the past one month, but there was uh, there were a few hiccups. There were a few usual uh, crying about uh, uh, how search is changing, which is changing every day. So we have collected uh, uh, the top ones. I think we should all be aware of, uh, rather than breaking over our head on how algorithms are changing. Let's think about how we can uh work around it right so uh, one primary thing that i noticed from our own analytics and some of the client analytics that i've viewed in the past uh, few weeks ai overviews or aio overviews showing up for a lot of how to and what is queries okay uh, we had a dedicated how-to section on our website. It's been around for like years right now. There are like a couple of hundred or 300 odd articles over there and we track uh, content and how much traffic we get through it. Uh, so particularly for how-to and what is queries from manual checks, what people have determined is uh, Tomek Rotsky did a study recently where he mentioned around 55% of the queries he tested with uh, the had AI overview showing up. Okay, though the sample size was quite, quite low, I recommend it uh, to test it for yourself. If you have a client or if you are doing such kind of content for your own agency website or your own website, uh, it would be interesting to know the numbers. Uh, but if you're really interested in this subject, a search engine ranking, serranking.com, they did a much deeper research about uh, AI overviews. And some of the highlights they mentioned in their content was ads often appearing uh, within AI overviews when search volume is uh, 0 to 50 and CPC is around 0 to 0 0.50. 0. I'll send you the link, so no need to take notes right now. Akshita will be sending out the details along with the notes and the links uh, for the, all the related articles to you by tomorrow. You should have it in your inbox by then. 12.47% uh, of keywords trigger AI overviews out of the total that they tested, which is like 5% higher than uh, their previous research from back in July. So AI overviews are growing. I've seen it in our industry as well, uh, when people are researching SaaS tools or specific platforms for reputation management, listings management, social media management, et cetera. Uh, particular categories with the highest ratio of keywords that end up with AI overviews and ads simultaneously in SERP are primarily pets. Uh, the pet care industry, the healthcare industry, and the fashion and beauty industry. They're, they're all beyond 60% of their queries show up with AI overviews. Similarly, shopping ads appear below AI overviews like 87% of the time, and above AI overviews at 30% of the time. You know, why is ever AI overview good or bad? I'm not going to get, get into it, but from a traffic perspective, AI overviews are not really driving traffic. If you look at the kind of the grayish link that appears as the source material on AI overview uh, content, uh, I doubt how many people are going to click on it and get to your website. So if you have a website or you have a client who are dependent way too much on how to type content or what is type informational content, I think this is time to diversify, okay? Don't don't delete your content. Don't try to over optimize anything, but drive it find the traffic sources. Okay, there are a lot more coming. This is AI is not going in anywhere. Uh, we have I don't think we have seen even one percent of the capabilities of AI uh, yet. 
Okay, we have we have we have seen the aggregation part. We have not uh, yet seen the notice the intelligence part. We were chatting about it within our team last uh, earlier this week. So second update uh, that I've seen uh, that's important. Okay, Google Business Profile has be will become the primary data data source for local services ads. So I think they have a cutoff date of November twenty first, twenty twenty four. So Google business profile data and reviews uh, will be the primary data source for LSA. So people who are running local services ads earlier, they would create a separate profile. The reviews were from coming from a different source and there were a lot of spam because the way local services ads work, review count and review rating became one of the primary uh, ranking uh, reasons for ads being ranked in a particular order. Okay, so that is not going to be the case. Uh, I think Google is going to in is integrating both LSA and with the GBP profiles. So whatever native reviews a business has on the GBP profile will show up on their local services ads as well. Okay, if your GBP name or address information does not match your local services ads, the ads will be paused. The same goes for unverified and suspended GBP listings. If, uh, if you're running an ad uh, on local services ads and your GBP profile for some reason becomes unverified or suspended, the ads will get paused. Uh, GBP will be the only source of reviews for local services ads. I think that makes sense as verified reviews will port into GBP directly. And uh, again, make a note of it, November 21st, 2024, if you know of a client or if you are running, G or if you are helping clients with local services ads, uh, make necessary changes if you need to, okay? If you do not have any reviews on Google business profiles and you are dependent on collecting reviews on the local services profile directly, change that. Okay. Uh, Third thing that I saw uh, related to our industry is, uh, is Google's review appeal tool. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of this. Basically, uh, if you go to this profile and follow the steps, uh, you get through the review appeal tool. And right now, uh, earlier, what used to happen is if you want to, if you get a bunch of fake reviews uh, from people and you want to report them, and you get a review from a person who has never done business with you or never in long way, in no way associated with the business and you think it's spam, you can go and report it. But you have to do it one by one. Right now, they have a multi-selection option that they have added that you can try out and makes life easier for agencies specifically who are working on it. Okay. So apart from the local SEO industry, marketing in general, uh, I'm not too sure if you've noticed the news, Facebook is taking another stab at local. I'm unsure how many stabs they are going to take at local, but with Facebook Marketplace, which is full of spam, after that they tried uh, something with Waze, that went the other way. So in a recent event in Austin, Facebook announced that a new local tab will, will aggregate content from marketplace, Facebook groups, and Facebook events into one place. This feature is currently been tested in, uh, uh, in a few cities, including Austin, New York City, Los Angeles, Washington, DC, et cetera. Uh, what is the purpose of local uh, tab? basically offers to personalize local content based on user interest and data. Uh, additionally, a new swipeable section is going to be added to the main feed with, uh, with which will highlight local content. Some of the key highlights I was going through the article that, that, that uh, struck out was were aggregates uh, local content from marketplace, Facebook groups and events. Basically, we'll personalize local events based on uh, your data. Uh, and uh, success is uncertain given Facebook's past record with local and uh, unable to make a platform that is in any way remotely spam proof. Way too much spam on uh, Facebook. Uh, 
but uh, one thing that you guys should try out if you have not for your customers and if you if you're as an agency or a consultant if you're providing uh, managed services to your customers i would recommend giving a shot to facebook ads try it out for your customers okay um, we tried it out for ourselves for the b2b segment we got a bunch of leads and i think i don't know how it works uh, with with all the with all the content that shows up on my feed on facebook but people are somehow getting results from facebook ads and uh, i'm not sorry to say that it works uh, the by the looks of it it works better than google ads at present okay with with this department of justice investigation going on with google and this talks of uh, splitting up google properties i don't know where it's going to land up okay uh, another thing uh, that uh, struck my attention was uh, chat gpt has mentioned that they're going to launch search gpt by the end of 2024 to all users and apparently th th there are talks about monetizing it it makes sense because their existing burn rate uh, the amount of money people are they are that burning every year uh, by 20 end of 2024 they would be burning right around about 5 billion dollars that's their loss for the year with a revenue of 3.7 billion so i'm sure sam sam altman as per what he said earlier that he doesn't like ads but i don't see any other way of monetizing it uh without ads uh interestingly perplexity has already announced that their ad model uh yeah i will send you the link you can give it a read if you are interested uh i think this is this kind of gives us a window to the future okay Uh, running ads on facebook running ads on social running ads on google uh, running ads on uh, chat gpt perplexity and all these other channels that are going to crop up over the next few years uh, interesting time maybe it's time for you to launch additional uh, managed services uh, for local businesses to just manage different kind of ads other than just doing google adwords and ppc stuff like that okay tips of the week i'll go from the bottom to the top okay if you or if you know somebody or an as an agency if you guys are outsourcing a lot of content the first thing that comes to mind a lot for a lot of people is the quality of the content and if it's being generated via ai so i was one of them about a year ago i used to be dependent uh, on ai based content checkers to identify if it's an ai generated content or not but since the improved models start uh, launching this year from different uh, ai providers these content checkers are are virtually useless okay they they're horrible at detecting content you just make changes to the headline i don't know how they are making still making money and fooling people into paying 50 60 dollars a month uh, read the content yourself if it's worth a read publish it if you think it's too optimized or another human being can't make sense of it don't publish it that's that's the way i look at it if it, if the content is useful it does it add to my experience then i use the content otherwise just just get rid of it don't use a content uh, checking tool i would rather spend that amount of money on tools that actually helps me optimize content better from a topical relevancy point of view uh, i believe uh, hrefs recently launched another plugin through which you can optimize content uh, give it a shot i'm going to try it out this week and let you know how it goes a uh, second thing that came into a uh, discussion earlier this week during a client call was uh, they 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 embarked on a link building journey they're building about a lot of backlinks 
and they kept asking uh, every time i get on a call with a client everybody is it's very difficult to explain to another local business that what are backlinks and what do, what can it do for you uh, traditional knowledge uh, dictates that i am going to look at uh, something a third party scoring system like a domain authority or domain rating to identify a value of a backlink uh, but is that enough so i don't do that anymore so whenever we are building a link from our different source or we are trying to link out to somebody there are there are few things that we try and identify before we embark on it before we want to if you want to approve that piece of content or we want to build build a link from that source uh, primary thing for me is traffic potential uh, it may not always be the case for a local business you might not always get uh, traffic from every link you build but you don't again for a local business you don't need a, a dozens or hundreds of thousands of links all the time to rank a website so the second thing that i check is the website that i am linking from or i am linking to is it is the content relevant to my audience and the topics we cover or we write about uh a highly relevant website uh link from a highly relevant website that that does not have a ton of traffic can do wonders for you as well okay then i take a look at organic reach of that website if i'm linking to it or am i getting a backlink from especially when i'm getting a backlink from from a website uh i'm sure all of you guys are using some some kind of a tool like ahrefs or semrush or other third party tools where you can identify the organic reach of the website or just google that website and see the number of uh number of pages that they are that they have been next or they're getting traffic from right uh next i go and check some of the past content and see the come the way they are using amber text okay if is if if it's all full of typical money terms and uh, not enough diversity uh, they are they are linking with uh anchor texts that are not even relevant to the said website i would avoid it and last but not the least indexation rate are the pages indexed is are they are the pages showing up on google uh, the usual website structure uh i will send you the checklist take a look at it if you want to add to it please do let me know okay i'll be more than interested in understanding how others are doing it okay uh last but not the least image optimization we have covered this subject or topic a few times earlier but these these this 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 keeps coming up especially from multi location clients i'll give you a typical use case that i that we came across earlier this week uh, i think last week one of my colleagues was speaking to this large client they are like hundreds and thousands of uh, branches they mentioned that oh i uploaded a bunch of photographs to my other branches they they were approved by google then i go in and upload the same set of images uh, to the rest of the branches and they got rejected uh the first question i ask when i am uploading a photo especially nowadays when google is extremely arbitrary in nature when i when they are rejecting stuff they don't give you an actual reason is relevance is this relevant is this image relevant to that business okay secondly is that image in any way going to enhance the user's experience okay your customer experience are they going to learn anything from it are they going to gain anything from it are they able to identify with that image uh, and associate that image with that business uh, then i went back and looked at the profile of the other business that my colleague was asking about and i saw a bunch of marketing images okay you you get those images where like 25% of the images covered those are all stock images human images they are in the banking industry they have a bunch of stock images that where they are trying to sell uh 10% loan or subprime loan or mortgage rates or uh, excellent service etc etc none of them are photos of any of their employees none of there are photos of the actual branch or their facilities none of all of them are photos with uh, 25 to 30% text overlay so if you have too much text on an image google will reject them okay there are times yes they approve them but more often than not they are going to reject them anything more than 10% 
uh, overlay is going to be rejected. If it's way too much op optimized with uh, you, you're trying to Photoshop it into oblivion with layers and layers of information and then you, you're going to get rejected. None of the images that I saw on their profile were actually images of their facility or the business or the or any image that the that their users are going to find useful. Okay. So there are a few things we do. How does an image impact ranking and click through rate? Your images show up in your feature snippets. Features, all of the most of the feature snippets nowadays include an image, which is an indication that image can impact results. That's the reason why it's being valued by Google. Then you have the three pack, usual three pack local results. They use images. So I'm sure Google is factoring the visual impact uh, when they are when they're ranking those. Uh, image carousals is a strong indication of the importance of images, especially for certain kinds of industry like hotels and restaurants and automobile. You see a ton more images than others. Uh, if you have noticed the AI organized local search results screen that Google is testing, it has a lot more images than traditional search results that you see, okay? Then there's this argument between uh, using real images versus stock images. Are real images going to help me rank better? Uh, nobody can say for sure, but real images can help you in a bunch of ways. It, it, it proves authenticity of the business, okay? It, uh, you get better user engagement on real images as they, uh, as they grab more attention of users. Real images can be associated with your brand identity. Search and search has slowly and surely over the last uh, decade or so tried to give preferential treatment to brands, be it in organic or in local. All, all that we see right now, the way search is going, you have to start doing some brand building exercises for the local businesses that you're doing. It's a popularity contest out there. Okay. You can use stock images, but when you overuse stock images, they are prone to removal or suspension. Uh, I would suggest that get authentic images. Uh, you, you cannot get them by the dozens all the time, but uh, maybe create a calendar for your client, a shared calendar of shared tasks for your customers where you can upload images on a regular basis. By regular basis, I mean every time there's an event or there's a there's a theme, do it, do it on a monthly basis or at least on a bi-weekly basis. Uh, encourage customers to upload images from your location of your business. Okay, maybe start a comp competition or some, some kind of a thing. Uh, as, I, as we mentioned earlier, relevance is far more important. And if you want to test, uh, I have brought this up before, uh, you can test it with Google's Vision API. Uh, I will try and build a tool later, but there is a free tool that you guys can go here, uh, upload an image over here and test how how is Google identifying that image. Okay, you'll get some idea. That way you can form a baseline of the kind of images that you want to create. I'll send the, I'll include the link in my notes and actually I will send it out uh, to later today or tomorrow. Just try and test it out. Uh, do not, do not, do not in under any circumstances just all of a sudden wake up and say, I'm going to delete all images because I don't like them. <laughs> do not delete. Get a few new ones and test with them first, okay? Uh, all of a sudden, if you delete a bunch of images from a client's profile, it can spike a drop in ranking, which is not good. So it's always uh, better to test it out first and then see the kind of images that work better. I think uh, if you're really running out, image, out of images from a customer, you're not get, going to get them on a regular basis, you can use some stock photos, but don't overdo it with stock photos uh, because profiles look really, really fake when you have a bunch of stock photos. Okay, last but not the least, uh, I know most of the larger uh, Larger tools have built some kind of a uh, AI overview tracker for keyword when you're trying to track uh, your keyword ranking. 
but there's this small little tool that I came across today uh, from Tom that you can try out. This is ziptie.dev. Basically, it's tracking AI overviews. I think the pricing is pretty decent if you want to analyze uh, keywords and, and track them separately. And if your existing tool doesn't do it, I think you can give it a shot. Otherwise, you can always fall back on something like uh, Href or uh, SEMrush. But I think both those tools do a lot more than just do uh, rank tracking. So this is a cheaper alternative if you don't want to spend a couple of hundred dollars every month on a new tool. Just, just try it out for a month and see how some of the keywords that you guys are optimizing for how are they faring on Google? How How is AI overview impacting them? Okay, try to correlate that information with the client's website, Google Search Console information. That will get a baseline and an idea of how it's impacting search. Is there a question? Is it possible Hi. to edit a business address on sign up or does it have to be done logging into Google business profile? Yes, you can edit it from sign up. However, please remember, Arti, that uh, Google may trigger a uh, re verification process if you're updating the address. Okay, do we have any other questions? Okay. Jay, you can Please. change the business phone number. As I mentioned, uh, any changes to primary information can trigger a re-verification request from Google. Okay, if you change the address or a phone number or say even category, it may trigger a re-verification request from Google. Yeah, if you need help figuring out how, you can send us an email at... Mm -hmm. No, that notification will show up on your Google business dashboard. How long will it take it? Usually takes for them any any edited content will take any anything between twenty four to forty eight hours to take effect. And if you need to re-verify, the notification will show up on your Google console itself within that time span. Just make sure that the phone number that you change uh, is also mentioned on your on on the website. If that information is there, if there is a match mismatch, then there could be other issues. Okay, I'm open for questions. If you guys have any other questions or suggestions, Right, I don't think we have any more questions. Uh, like we said, you guys don't need to take any notes for this. Yes, uh, we'll be sending out the recording and the event notes and the deck by tomorrow. Yes, uh, everyone, the recording will be sent out. If, if you have anyone else, just, just go to our website and sign up for this event. We we send out the recordings along with all the notes, all third party links, suggestions, everything after after every event. Yeah. Thanks, Andy. Thanks everyone for joining. Take care. Thanks everyone. Have a lovely day. Bye bye.